the more you fan yourself into flames, the more you give God opportunity to use you. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Amina Umar and I welcome you once again back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, please do well to subscribe. I talk about relationship, I talk about lifestyle, I talk about marriage and I talk about faith. You're going to have an amazing time here with me. And if you are a returning subscriber, high five, you're welcome back again to my channel. Right, okay. So today, I want to talk about how to fan your giftings into flames or should I say how to fan yourself into flames because you see the bigger your fire right the more the things that you can consume the more the consumables that can be taken in by that fire so it means that the more you fan yourself into flames the more you give God opportunity to use you, the more you find yourself into flames, the more you make yourself available and give him opportunity to use you. Because the truth is that it's not as though God doesn't want to use some of us. But the problem is that we have not taken time to really find ourselves into flames such that we have built our capacity to the point where he can step in and use that thing now today i'm going to talk about how you can fan yourself into flames as an individual how you can bring in those giftings the talent the passion heaven's investment upon your life to collaborate with god and to work with him to see that the miracle that he has placed on your inside becomes a manifestation to the world to see that the treasure that he has placed in your earthen vessel is being utilized to its now the first thing that you must learn how to do is that you must learn how to maximize your potential and the truth is that you cannot maximize a potential that you don't know so before you even start thinking of maximizing your potential you must first of all discover the solution that God has placed inside of you discover the answer to your generation that he has placed inside of you discover that thing that he has given to you that you can use to collaborate with him to see that okay his kingdom comes in this particular area or that particular area you need to know what he has given to you you need to know the investments that he has placed upon your life once you know it, the next thing you need to do is that you need to learn how to maximize these potentials by doing what? Give yourself to reading, give yourself to studying, give yourself to learning and gleaning from the wisdom of mentors who have worked on this path. Give yourself to good accountability that will push you to the place where you need to go. There is always room for improvement. You cannot just say, oh, I have discovered this. God has given me this. And you're not doing anything about it. An unrefined gift is as good as no gift at all. The more sharper your gift has become, the more God can use it. So some of you, you need to sharpen your acts. You need to sharpen the tools that God has given to you to see that you can um, work with him on earth to see that his kingdom comes to pass and you can impact your world, impact your generation. You can leave your name on the sands of time for generations to come so that they can call your name and be blessed by it. Now, this, is, this has nothing to do with the pulpit ministry. Trust me, it has nothing to do with the pulpit ministry. The pulpit ministry is just one task of it there are so many ways that you can partner with god and you need to discover that another thing is that after you have discovered this potential the next thing that you must also do is that you must learn how to work with the holy ghost to see that you know and understand better about what he has given you because the bible says what well, he's going to come as our comforter our counselor our teacher our strengthener in fact it says that you will need no man to tell you anything but this spirit that you have received he will guide you into all truth so it means that when you need guidance into understanding what god has given to you you can rely on the help of the holy spirit to lead you and you need him for every daily activity that you engage yourself in because you need to be led by him 
He knows the way. He understands you. He knows what you need per time and per season. And you also need to give yourself to prayer. Now, I see prayer has a magnetic force. So, when you begin to engage in prayer, what happens is that you begin to attract the people that you need for your journey. You begin to attract the resources that you need for your journey. In fact, I also see it as um, prayer has the ability to guide the paths that you are walking in. So it means that if everything that I need for my destiny is found on this particular part, but because of circumstances, because of life experience and challenges and everything, I've been moving on this particular part. Now, the more I engage in prayer, the more my steps will be reordered, redirected, till I come into alignment to this particular part where everything that I need to fulfill my destiny, to fulfill my call, to fulfill all that God wants me to do and to find satisfaction in life comes into manifestation. So prayer is a magnetic force that can help you in destiny. It is also um, a route changer. Okay, it is also a route changer. Another thing that you also need to do is that you need to mind your association. You see, iron sharpens iron. Walk with the wise and you will be wise. The people that you engage in matters a lot because your association determines your assimilation. Now check the people around you. See, today the world has become a global village thanks to the internet. So it means that even if you are not finding the people that will encourage you and put you on the right path, around you even if you don't have them around you you can find them on the internet you can drink from the wells of people that are not even within the borders of your country by making good use of the internet you see the internet is a global university and it's so amazing that this this um this global university you don't get to have um someone impose courses on you and say okay you must take this course you must take this course you must take this course no you have the leverage of deciding okay i'm going to take this course i'm going to um give myself to this particular course and all so you can decide okay i've seen someone in us that is doing something similar to the passion that god has placed inside of me that is doing something similar to what i i perceive that god is calling me to do how do i get to know this person you must not know this person one on one you can interact with their materials and the more you interact with their resources the more you draw in their spirits the more you draw in their content the more you learn their value systems the more you learn their beliefs the more you know that okay this is what this person has done give into mentorship another thing that you also need to understand is that don't be too scared to start small don't be too scared to start small you see finding your giftings into flames largely depends on your ability to be able to see the forest in the seed because if you despise the seed that god has given you then you are blind to the forest that is in that seed you must see the seed in every forest. Don't be too scared to start small. Don't be too scared to make your mistakes. The more you, the more, the more you obey, the more you gain clarity. Clarity is a journey. If you are waiting till you understand everything, till you know everything, before you take any step, I bet you, you will not take any step. You will not even do anything. But the more you see, the more you move and as you are moving you are opening your spirit up to receive more information to receive more instruction to see more and to understand more don't be too scared to start small start from your jerusalem see let me tell you the truth you cannot say god has sent me to save the world when the people in your streets are dying Start where you are. Do something where you are. Be able to reach out to the people that are around you and see how much impact you are able to make. Learn from there. And before you know, God will expand all that you need. And then another thing that you also need to invite is that you need not to be ashamed of what God has given to you. You don't need to be ashamed of the giftings of God upon your life. You don't need to be ashamed 
of what he has given to you. Even if people start making mockery of you, like, oh, is it this lady? This lady that we did this particular thing together, she's the one that has started doing this thing. Don't give in to it. You must drop every shame and be courageous about manifesting who you are. You must be courageous about taking on the vision that God has given you. You must be courageous about that mission that God has placed on your inside. And then lastly, for today, you must give in to the secret place because you see, times and season. So the instruction for yesterday is for yesterday. You need another one for today. Give in to the secret place. Always go to God. Okay, Father, what do I need to do? Do I need to make an adjustment on this? Okay, do I need to correct this? This particular thing, what do you think I should do about it? See, it is in the secret place that you continuously receive vision to keep on moving. Because the Bible said what? That they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They will run and not grow weary. So it means that for you to be able to run and fan yourself into flames without burning out, you need to always give yourself to the secret place, hearing what God has to say to you every time, understanding what he wants you to do, knowing where he wants you to be, and it will always help you. Now, I hope that with these few points of mine, I've been able to share with you ways that I have, um, God has helped me to fan myself into flames. Okay? And I believe that even as you imbibe some of these tips and some of these um, practices, God is going to help you. And I look forward to hearing your testimony. If this video has blessed you, please leave a comment for me down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you next time. Bye!